I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I get a lot of questions. What do I do with a panel? There's lots of big, beautiful panels. This is a big digital panel from Hoffman Fabrics. It's got a lot of detail in it, but that can make it a little bit difficult to fit in with traditional patchwork quilting. I think I have a nice pattern worked out. We are going to need a jelly roll and we're going to need a solid color that will look good with the panel. And I think this nice minty green one will work really well. So grab your supplies. Let's go down to the workroom and get started. Let me show you what we're gonna do with this panel. I've been sketching out what I think is gonna look really good in here. So this is just what I call a bathtub sketch. I like to sketch in the bathtub. I get ideas for quilts. So we are gonna do the jelly roll strips here. And we're gonna add the green down here. The first thing we wanna do is open up the jelly roll and pick a color that's going to be an accent. So this is going to be at the edge of each strip. And since my background color here is aqua, I think I'm going to use these lavender ones for the accent. So let's open this up and put those two aside. Yeah, I think we'll do these two. Those will make a good, good contrast there. Put those aside. Now, out of the rest of them, we want to pick 22 strips. And I'm probably going to use most of these colors except the aqua ones because there won't be enough contrast. So we'll just pull those out and use those for another project. Now we're going to take 12 of these strips. It doesn't matter which 12 you use, but you're going to cut one piece at 10 inches off of each one. Since I just need the one piece, I'm going to layer these up. I'm opening them up and I'm layering them up as carefully as I can. I really only need a little bit right here. So I'm gonna do about eight layers at a time because that's what I can cut easily. So I actually stacked up six at a time because I've got a total of 12 and I'm gonna cut off the selvages there and then measure over 10 inches. And then because these pieces are pinked, I am going to see if I can't clean them up a little bit so that I don't have to work with as much of this pinked edge. So I'm gonna put this on a line here and I can actually trim a little teeny bit off of each side and then they will be more accurate and less hairy looking. So let's just get rid of all of that there and then we're gonna trim right over here. And that'll make the strips quite a bit easier to work with. Now the rest of those strips we're just going to set these aside and save them for later. And we are either going to use them on a pieced border or we're gonna use them on our binding. Now we're gonna take the other 10 strips and we're going to cut one piece at six inches and two pieces at eight inches off of each one. Now they're stacked up, but because I have to get an eight, a six and a six, I'm gonna be in the middle here where that fold is. So I'm gonna take the whole stack over to the ironing board here, and I'm just gonna press it a little bit so that that will be accurate when I cut it. Now, when I move all these pieces, there's all this lint and debris left here. And I find that if you use a microfiber cloth, you can clean your table off really easily. The stuff sticks to the microfiber and it won't stick to your cutting board. Now, the two accent fabrics, or the two accent strips, we are going to cut from each one two at one inch wide. Now we just need to cut the background fabric. So we are going to cut one at seven inches, two at five inches, and one at three inches. And we have this as a free pattern, so you don't have to worry about writing all these numbers down. Just click the link below and you can get to the free pattern. We're gonna start with our little teeny one inch strips and the accent color, 
And I'm gonna use a very small seam allowance here. I want my stitches to be pretty small because we're gonna stitch this onto here and then slice it up. So you wanna make sure you have a very small seam length. Now remember, we had two different colors of these little skinny strips. So I'm gonna take the first color here and sew it onto the smallest piece and the biggest piece. And then I'm gonna take the second color and put it on those medium ones there. So using your small stitch length, I've got about 15 stitches per inch. Just sew with a st very straight quarter inch seam allowance. Now try not to stretch either of the pieces. And it's real important that your seam allowance is very accurate since this piece is so small, any inaccuracies would really show up. Now I'm going to finger press this seam. So I'm going to open the seam up and use my fingernails or the pad of my finger to press right down there because that will open it up. We don't want to divot in here. We don't want it folded like that. We want it all the way open. And if we do this before we iron, it makes it really easy to iron it flat. Now, even though we finger pressed, we're still gonna wanna iron these. So I like to put this on the edge that's straight, like the edge of my ironing board. You can use a yardstick, something that's straight, and then use some a dry iron first, smooth it out as you go. And then when it's straight, add some steam. Now we can cut these in bulk, so I'm going to put these on my cutting board and I'm going to have them all lined up on one of the lines, but not all lined up in the same spot because I don't want all of this to be on top of itself because it'll get too lumpy. So I'm just moving this one down one inch and then this one's a little bit shorter. We can put it right on top. Now I can cut them all at the same time and I'm only cutting at most eight layers, but I can cut in bulk. Now these are going to get cut two and a half inches wide. And you can again use your weight here if you want for more stability. So I'm gonna cut off the selvages here. And then I'm gonna cut some strips two and a half inches wide. So now we've got 12 from each size here. So there's 24 of these because we had two strips that we made, two, two separate units there, and we've got 12 of these guys. Now we're going to lay out our colorful strips here. So you want to look at the colors. We're gonna, we've got three, three different sizes here. So we're going to start with the shortest, then we're going to do a medium, then we're going to do a long one then another medium. So usually what I will do is keep following this pattern. And when I'm all done, I will trade colors around so that we have a nice color blend. So we don't get too much purple or too much green on one end. So we're gonna do short, medium, long, medium, short, medium, long until we've got 22 laid out. I know I said there was 22. There's actually 21 in the row here. There's 21 and it makes a little curved effect there. So these are gonna get sewn side by side, but before we stitch them, we are gonna add one of these to the end. So we're gonna add the short guy to the longest strip, and we're gonna add a medium sized one to the medium strip, and we're gonna add a long one to all of these shortest strips. So we're gonna end up with both edges exactly even. So we've got one row here we're gonna do, and another row there. I've picked up my pieces in order, and I put a big pin through there. So now I'm gonna keep them pinned while I stitch on these pieces. So this is one of the shortest pieces, so it's going to get one of the longest pieces stitched to it. So I'm gonna leave it pinned on there, put it right sides together, flip that stuff out of the way, and stitch with a nice, careful quarter inch seam there. And it is easiest if you finger press as you go, you want to press that seam toward the accent. So these are being pressed towards the middle there. So now we'll just 
keep that on there and we'll grab the next piece. This is a medium size piece. It's going to get a medium size accent. Now, if you're not sure if you're grabbing the right one, you can always check here. It's gonna be the same length as this one when it's done. So keep adding the accent and the little teeny strip here till you have this whole stack done. This is the last strip that needs to have those accents added. So now I'm going to pick up the pinned area and make sure that they all came out the same length and I didn't stitch anything that was the wrong size on there. They're all right. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the pin and I'm gonna just poke it through from the back and I'm gonna leave it just like that. And I'm gonna take the top one off and the next one off and I'm gonna stick this on the right side. So I'm gonna keep adding to the right every time I pick one up. These are exactly the same length. So just use your quarter inch seam and stitch them together. So keep your seam allowances pointing towards the center there. And every row that we stitch, we are going to finger press as we go. So we're gonna finger press all the seams to the right. We're gonna keep adding pieces to the right and we're going to keep finger pressing to the right. Now when you have these seams, you have to press a little bit harder. Now we're just going to take this piece off, add it to the right, and just keep going till the stack is all done. Just one more to put on. So this is the last guy. We'll stitch it on and then let's get it ironed nice and flat. Now I'm gonna to wanna to stretch it out. I think I'm gonna start from the back side actually. We wanna make sure these seam allowances go the way we want them to. So I'm gonna just dry press it from this side. And then once you get part of that done there, you can flip this over and it'll be real easy to get this nice and flat. And these seams are, seam allowances are kind of thick where this spot is, so make sure they're facing the right way, but then you can steam it. Let's get the big panel here. I'm gonna cut it off the bolt. And then we are going to iron it. So the panels, they don't always come perfectly straight. And so sometimes we have to straighten it up a little with a little bit of steam or maybe even a spray bottle, but let's see how straight this one is. So this guy, if you've got a rectangular ironing board like we have here, you can tell if it looks like it's parallel to the edges. This one is pretty straight. So I'm gonna be able to just steam press it nice and flat. Now here's a spot here where the panel it gets stretched a little on the bolt, so it's veering this way a little. So I'm going to heat it up a little and pull it over and then kind of re-block it so that it's square. And I'm stretching a little as I go and I'm just squaring it back up to the way it was when it was printed. Let's measure how big these guys turned out. They're supposed to be 42 and a half but I have a tendency to do my seam allowances a slight bit too big. So I'm gonna see how big they actually turned out. Okay, they're 42 inches and that's fine. I'm going to cut my panel to 42 inches. So if your patchwork things came out 42 and a half, then cut your panel 42 and a half. So measure and cut them to that exact size. I like to fold the panel in quarters and then measure from the middle so that my flowers will still be centered. So I'm just gonna line up these folds on the lines here, and I'm gonna measure 21 each way and then cut to that measurement. Now let's see how these panels are going to look on here. When I designed the pattern, I thought that I was going to put the colorful part up against the panel. But now that they're made, I think it's going to look better 
with the solid. So this is how I thought I was going to put this on here, like that. And you can, but I really think it looks a lot better like that. So these are going to go on both ends and I'm going to pin it in a couple spots and then stitch it on. Let's see what it looks like. Very nice. I think what I will do, yeah, I'm going to put a two and a half inch border of this green all the way around it, but then we're gonna want to pick one of the more colorful colors, a pink or a lavender or a blue for a finishing border. So let's take this down to the retail store and pick something out pretty. So I'm gonna use a solid for the border. I could use a nice batik, but I think I'm gonna stick with the same kind of prints we've, the same kind of solids we've got in here. Let's pick, maybe, hmm, let's see. One of these pinks would work. Um, I could do lavender. I wanna keep it nice and light. Light pink would look good. Keeping it pretty girly. I might do a light blue, actually this blue here. I think the blue will look better. For thread colors, for this quilt, I want something really pale. Any of these would work, but I think that this will show too much. That will blend in really well. I think I'm going to go with this really light peach. It's going to show up a teeny bit in the colors, a teeny bit on the green, but it's really soft and that's what I want. For the quilting pattern, I want something that looks like petals. So this one will work perfect. It looks a lot like the petals in the flower that's in the big panel. Here's the finished panel quilt. I'm really happy with how it turned out. So soft and pretty in these pastel colors. The patchwork border here, it's the same fabrics on the binding. So we took the extra pieces from here and made a pieced binding. And that just has got all the same colors going around the edge. It turned out about 56 by 78 inches. So it's a nice throw size. Quilting looks great, looks like petals. Really a fun project and a great way to use up these panels. This was so much fun, I made another color. So this is a deeper color, and we've got more contrast here with the accent compared to the panel that's in the middle. And that gives you a completely different look, very rich colors, but a great way to border these panels. Thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see all of our tutorials. Happy quilting.